Welcome everyone, it's Enrico Jenko. I'm the Signal. We're powered by the Mighty Mighty Team Alliance. And we're on our charts. You see I got three boxes up and I left the boxes up just so you can see the the price action within the box, right? You see the price action is encapsulated inside these boxes, okay? Real simple stuff, right? So we took a be a bet online trade earlier on, right? Remember, this we we like to use this to sketch out, you know, little opportunities we find, right? I just took a trade and you see I won what a dollar sixty. I bet two dollars and I won a dollar sixty. Real real simple stuff. Um, the trade I took was right in here. I it was bet that I was going to be over um, 32.70 or something like that. I think I ended up being 32.718 right here. I I said it was going to be over 32.7709. We ended up 32.718. Real close, right? Real close. You gotta understand with these two dollar trades, um, they're fifteen minutes. So you're getting an eighty percent return, but the chances of you winning is uh, it's a hard it's it's hard because you gotta be thinking about what the market is going to be doing ten minutes later. We don't know what the market is going to be doing ten minutes later. We could barely know what the market is doing five minutes later. All right. Um, something else happened. If you look at my Nadex count. I ended up getting a trade off, and I, I didn't get to actually show anyone that trade. So I'm not going to count it in our record or anything. I'm kind of upset that I did it like that because um, it just happened to come when I just ran in here and I saw it real quick. Let's look at I wanted you to see what happened in that particular trade. It was a, um, what was this trade? I forgot. I believe this, what was that trade I did? It was right here. It was actually this buy, I believe, because we saw this happen. The, I mean, this sell. Because we watched the market break all the way up, hit this line online right here, and then start breaking out. So the market came all the way back to that line, then you know, did a little false breakout right here. I think we probably got money on a little false breakout or something like that, you know. But we, we, we're we really looking for a real break. So I I did this, and I think this, I admonish myself for that because I believe this is, it was a break in discipline, really. So this is not a trade. So we, so far, we haven't taken any any trade, all right? So don't think you missed anything or anything like that. We haven't taken a trade because no trade has really came our way that fits our perfect criteria. Our criteria on this particular trade is going to say that the market is going to shoot out of here, it's going to go back to this line, and then it's going to shoot out again. All right? That's what we're looking for. Um, right here, we saw the market uh, shoot out this area, come back to this area, and now we're waiting for it to kind of shoot back out again. Right on a, in a positive move. Will it do that? Who knows? It might even go up all the way back up that way. It might continue in the up direction. All right. I'm looking at down in this area. We should have the strongest bulls. Um, the weaker ones, of course, up here. Right, weaker bulls up here. We should have um, maybe some stronger ones down here in this area. Right, unless this is a full breakout. And then if it's a full-on breakout, that means the supply will over, over, um, and there'll be more supply than demand, and it will overpower the demand, and prices will just keep running down until it finds more demand again. All right, so these are all things that we're looking for. The market is always in that state of flux where it could be a buy or it could be a sell. And we're constantly making those decisions of which one is it? Is it going to be a buy or is it going to be a sell? This is the, the constant battle that we have to um, face. All right? So the decision-makings are always there. 
And because that decision making is always there, there's always the possibility to make the wrong decision. That's kind of why we kind of just chill out and don't act on anything until we're positive that the market has confirmed the move that we want to make. All right? You got to remember all the, the movements in the market that the institutions use and do, they're based on statistics. All right? So for, say, this trend to happen, this trend, say this whole trend is happening, right? But say it, it was at this point, right? We didn't even see all this point, right? For this trend to continue up, statistically, it's got to be likely to happen because that's the way the programs are, are working, all right? You got to understand this all over these chart. There's, you know, technical indicators, key indicators, pivots, price levels that the institutions are, are looking at, right? Um, sometimes, sometimes you get enough different institutions just happen to look at the same price point because it's obvious to them, right? So this is why it always seems like they might be you know, might be getting picked on or something, but it's not being, you're not being picked on, it's that um, the institutions are looking for the, the best um, profit with the lowest risk, right? You got to understand, if they're going to be smart and profitable, they, they won't do anything that they believe is a weak move on purpose, on my, but, you know, they won't do weak moves unless it, a weak move somehow is going to further their their um, program along, their buy-sell programs. That's what they call the buy-sell programs, all right? So all you got to realize really, though, is that the, these big banks and institutions, they're going to be responsible for all the price action, all right? And that's why price action trading is more reliable than every, everything else because you're just piggybacking your trade on the activity of the, the higher institutions, large institutions, right? Um, some some of these institutions they'll they'll do day trading, but really for their trades to be profitable, the market has to move a certain amount of ticks. Period. And we as the price action traders, we're going to see that we're going to see that move early. And that allow us to get in early and be confident that you know the 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 odds of a successful trade is going to be good. Um, um, uh, institution really can't have a market just turn five ten ticks against them because that that adverse risk. It, it's too much money at risk. It's too much money at risk for them to do that. Someone would be losing their job for going against the program, most likely. So these are just things that you should just look at, know that they're going to only enter the trade when they feel that the, the risk of the trade going against them is, is tiny, very tiny, all right? We do that. We are the ones that will go into the trade, you know, risking everything, just doing something incredibly stupid. That's what we do as retail traders. But the institutions, they're not doing that. There's a lot of high frequency trading goes on now, and it affects how the market moves and trends and whether there's a range or a trend or not. And these algorithms there, they're actually moving and holding positions maybe for a fraction of a second. Some of the algorithms might hold it for hours. You know, every one of these algorithms and ideas, it has some type of sound logic to it and people have back tested it and they spent thousands or maybe millions of dollars 
for the algorithm that they have in the market. So when we come in doing our little technical analysis, you know, it's nothing compared to the information that they have. So that's that's why I always stress that you can't just take any trades and you can't just be willy-nilly about it. you got to kind of be focused and conniving and just get your, your yours. Just get what you can get and just kind of leave, exit orderly. All right. Um, Now how we, a lot of us trade, how things are going, so many computers, like the opportunities might only sit there for fractions of a, of a second. They might be there a couple of seconds. So that's why it's so hard to, to sit here and say, well, what's this going to do in the next 15 minutes? I can't say really what it's going to do in the next minute, but that's what trading is about. And this is what betting is about and all of these, you know, we could even go to the point where we say gambling. Um, is the, are, does gambling and betting and, and trading have a lot to do with each other? A goddamn right they do, right? But a gamble, you just, you know that there's no mathematical premise for you to win. You have, there is no mathematical premise for you to win a gamble, for, to win gambling on a consistent basis. The market is a little different. We can win that on a consistent basis if we choose not to gamble, all right? Math, there's a lot of numbers involved in statistics, so things are based on everything is doing, we're doing in the market based on some level of logic, all right? So you got all these institutions and they're getting information about how the order flow is and all that uh, a few milliseconds before I get it and you get it and everyone else get it. And they'll spend tens of thousands a month just to be able to get that information just a millisecond more before I get it and you get it because that's how important data is. That's how much of an edge that they need to move money. All right, these are all the things that, that are going on behind the scenes, and I just like to kind of talk about it because I know nothing about it, and I know most other people don't know anything about it, but this is who we have to trade against. So it's hard, it's very difficult if you don't know your enemy to go into battle with the enemy because you don't, you haven't studied him, haven't studied him. That's why someone could, you see, uh, a fight or a football game or some type of sports game where a team that you don't think is supposed to win wins because the other team might not have studied them. They have not studied their opponent or they, they underestimated the opponent. And many times we do that in the market also. We underestimate what is possible in the market, how far that the market can actually go in a minute, two minutes. 30 seconds. I've seen the market in 30 seconds go from all the way down here, all the way up here somewhere. Make this whole run, just as it took 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 45, just as it took two hours to make this run, it could be made in 30 seconds also. Right? It all depends on how the market is moving. Um, you see right here, market did another little fake breakout came all the way back to the line, right? Came all the way back. Let's see that it tried to actually break out again, all right? This is actually, this area is a very good point of interest because it shows strong bodies you would figure here Right? You figure you might going to get some strong buys here, but if, like, if this market is supposed to break out, if we're looking for a breakout, right, but we're saying there's also strong buyers here, right, how, how should we be looking at this? 
Interesting. Um, let's actually bring this over a little bit more. I'm actually just talking my way about this while we're looking also. So I'm talking about it too because I'm like, if this changes, like when the market, if the market changes, like the direction of its focus, right, what we, the, the, the bulls, the strong bulls are further, even further down. The strong bulls become weak bulls now because they're overpowered by strong, strong sellers. All right. So these are all the couple. Just a couple of things I'm looking looking at about here. Just a couple of things I'm looking at. In my head, I'm just looking at an imaginary line going across here, and if this breaks down there, then possibly the market keeps going down. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's all theory, it's all conjecture until we get the responses. So a big part of price action is watching the responses coming from these edges of the market, these points of interest, these zones, right? We want to watch the, the reaction to the market to these zones, right? So this particular one right here, now it's going up is buying. Look at that. It gets we get a little smaller right there. So let's see what happens. Of course, they've been touching this little mark a couple of times. It came there once, twice, three times. Uh, it might might actually go up this time, right? We might we might have just got some strong buyers in that area. Let's let's actually let's look at Nadex. Just want to see what it looks like. So you'd be looking at eighty four, right? Eighty, I mean thirty two seventy three, right? Thirty three seventy three. You could take it now. Let's just imagine that we just took it now, right? We took it eighty five or whatever. All right, let's let's act like this was an eighty. 85 in here, whatever, right? And we were, we are pip and a half over, pip point seven over, right? And we were looking good so far. Let's see what I'm looking at, right? Because like I said, what? We got the stronger bias here, right? Strong bias. Because what happened? It didn't turn over. The the supply didn't end up overwhelming this demand at this level. What happened is the demand ended up overwhelming the supply at the level, right? And so market kept buying up. And if we was in that, right, that 32.73, at 85 or whatever, 85, 83, we probably could have made it. But we definitely know we could have got in at 85, right? We would have got at least 13% from profit from this trade as everything continues the way it is now, right? We got about 26, 25 seconds left, right? That's just everything stays the way it is right now, 17 seconds left. Okay. That's just something we're just looking at. We're just looking at how price is moving in these areas and what happens to it as it moves in these areas, right? So price moves always back up here. I would be expecting it to maybe come all the way back down again since it's been alternating, excuse me, since the price has been alternating. But our, our job is to watch the reactions all the time, what, how the market reacting to price levels. The market got to this price level, which was 73, 74, whatever, whatever you call it, seven price level of about 74, right? That's that price level. And then when the market got there, what did it start doing? Right? It started selling at that level, right? It started selling down at that level. But you have to watch it because it could do anything. 
right? We don't know what it's going to do. All we could do is see what its reaction is going to be and then offer its reaction, make a logical trade from it. I like how that, that kind of built up, right? A little strength build up, but you know up this part is going to be the weakest part of it, right? So you have to first know, first have it clear some area You can't assume that it's just going to keep continually go up, even though it is right here. And this one might stay up for quite some, a little while, right? And went past that 50 mark. It might stay up a while. Um, let's see this. 1230 would be this one. Mm. We already won one. We want to take another shot? This is what I like about this. You can just take shots at it just because. Right? Let's just take another shot at the 12.30. Got nine minutes left. You're seeing that little move. We'll take a shot. Let's take a shot at it, right? $2. Let's say the asset is going to be up. And we're going to buy. All right? We're going to buy it. Let's take a shot. Right? We don't know. We could be, we could be wrong this time. But I'm just taking another shot just because we're here and we can do it. Just because. So we'll take a look at it. I'm not really sure, but she, she's acting all, done got all flaky on me already. But that's the way you do that. That's the way you do that. Usually with my little $2 trades, I might even still do those one at a, one, once a day, but who knows? Don't worry, don't worry about it. Don't even, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. And you see the market actually dropping down right now. Let's let's look at it. Let's see what it's doing. I tell you that what's what's this area? This area is a little weaker over here. The the, the market is going to have to make decisions over here on whether it, it wants to play, you know, in nice in this area, whether it's going to want to continue to trend up in this area. Right? Um, what are we at? Seventy thirty two, seventy three? Uh who knows? I like um, 73 itself, but who knows? Because of the fact that it's not going to make 75, it might not make 73 just because it didn't make 75 and everything gets all, you know, crazy. You know? See? Look at 73 now. 73 is now in jeopardy of not being... Made. They're selling down 73. They're selling down 72 now, right? They're selling down almost. They're selling. Oh, they they almost selling down 71. They sell 71 down quite some some way, but not enough. Not enough at all, right? But let's see what happens. Cause maybe at um, even they sold down 71. You see that? They sold 71 all the way down. Right? Sold it all the way down. See that? All of this got sold down. Um, now this makes me want to have to change my direction. Right? Because look at that. I'm looking at that strength right there. Let's just see. We have to look. We have to wait and see this one. Right? Because maybe, maybe this candle comes and matches up. Or maybe it does not. Maybe it continues downward. And if we continue downward, no, no, no big deal. Because we could always reverse out the direction on our two dollar trade. All right? Right now we're just we're good. We're just watching. First week, like I said, the first week we're gonna get in we're gonna get acclimated. With looking at the market, looking at what we we're, we're seeing, and make sure these things are are true. Look at this. This market went went down. It went back up. Hit this area. Came back down. 
usually I like to see that. I think that's that that's what I like to see. I see that it's dealing into this two areas though. This little area is tight though also. Um <laughs> let's see, let's see, let's see. I guess you're not gonna come back up for Papa. But that's what I really wanted to see. I just really wanted to see you reverse back up in time. Let me see how much time we got on this right here. We do, oh we did twelve forty five on that, huh? Uh is that was it expiry at twelve forty five or was this expiry at twelve thirty? Let's let me see. Let me make sure. Open trades. Um, I got this open trade. Thirty two seven four five. That's the open trade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's still open. That one's open till. What time does it expire? Twelve thirty or. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're not going to make that one. No, no big problem. Like I'm saying, that's why it's a two dollar trade, my friend. That's why it's two dollars. So we can do things like that. Take take a little shot and see what happens. Um, <laughs> let me see something on there. I want to check what it had looked like. So it always down. Then I got that pop up. Hmm. Look like they buying right there, and I'm happy about it, but just not enough buying right there to be happy about, I don't think. So. Yeah, that's 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 a Ghana. What's all that? Let's see what these charts look like. It's funny. That's why I would only do like even though this trade is two dollars. When you start getting into you know a trade with more money. That's why you only trade once a day. You don't do a bunch of stuff. That's why I only trade once a day. Because the more stuff you do in the market, the more chance you got of, of losing. Right? The more chance you got of losing. I don't. I don't really want to lose. Because it is now this trade. What we got? Entry was thirty-two seven four five. And we only up at what thirty two sixty eight? Nah. We only got two minutes left. We got no shot now, right? No shot, but it was a good It's a good call. It's a good call. It's just so our you know, it's a rough one. It's just it's just rough. It's just rough one. But I think we're gonna do we'll do another one somewhere after this. I guess just to um, just to be profitable for the end of the day, because I'm pretty sure we'll get a reverse a reversal off of this that I can look at. Um, this was pretty interesting. Let's let's see. I went up there, came back, and what we say about those breakouts, right? They usually don't be happening, right? They usually don't happen, and as you see. Another one it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Only one breakout actually happened. This one. This was the only breakout that actually happened. And when you see how it happened, it didn't happen the way our parameters, our strategy wants it to happen. So we wouldn't have even been in that particular breakout. Um, if you want to call this one, you can't call that a breakout. That's just like a really just a fake out and that's it so as far as how we wanted to trade this there have not been any real trade setups for us at all right so you didn't miss anything but you did you're learning a lot about how this market is going to be moving which is more important all right
Who took that? You know what? Let me look. How far we got to go into that? Because that, what time is this? That's the only thing. You can't hop in and out of these either. You're just stuck in in the trade for the, the duration. You know what I mean? Just in the trade for the duration. Let's see the closed trade. I want to see that. That's my closed trade right there that I just lost, right? So we lost 40 cents on that, that particular trade, right? A little 40, 40 cent. But we know it, so we're cool with that. We know that. And you can see in my balance, my balance, I started this, my balance is $78. It was $78 and what, 40 cent? So I lost my 40 cent, right? I started this particular account, I believe, with like $50. I'm just doing the $2 trades every day. Um, yeah. Let's get back to where I want to be at with this. Let's go back on, let me see, the push down. Do I go for that push down at, what's on, 12.45? Next 15 minutes, 13 minutes or whatever? Let's wait till a candle, I guess, finishes. Let's see, actually, let's go to... Look at our 15 minutes real quick. I want to see that. Let's see these things up. It's not really sure if it's ready to make it down here or not. Uh, I mean, we got strong sellers here, but we probably got strong buyers coming in here too. So and you never know which one is going to be which. Who's stronger? Doesn't look like it's in a rush there to, to make it down there at this time. I know that. Right? Doesn't look like it's in a mad rush to go down there. I know that. Um. How many time we got on this? 12.45. I see this can't really make it down that far. It makes me want to, since this is not making it down, I'm, it makes me just want to take the trade the other direction real quick. With the BET online here, 
I'm not staying strictly, strictly, I don't stay strictly, strictly a lot of times to what all our trades because of the the 15 minute expiry time a lot of times. The 15 minute expiry times, it's a long time. It's a long time. That's why they give you 80% payout because that's a long time to stick around. Let's see what this looks like right here. It look like I'm having a hard time. After this expiry, we'll probably go in and, and let's change up a little bit what we got, how we shaded, right? We want to and get this part of the market right here. See if we could get that blocked off. Here we were. go back in here I think I don't think it's going to make it down there let's take a look at that it's having a pretty hard time
Oh, uh, just a little too late right there. See how I'm going to go in there? We can't. It's, we have to be in there till 3 o'clock. I mean, 1 o'clock. Okay, let's let's clean up a little bit, and we can we can mark stuff off again later on. I just want to clean up a little bit for you. Let's remove that one. Let's take this one out too. Let's remove all our boxes, and we're gonna place some, you know, just some new ones up there. So we start fresh. Give me another one here. Give me this one right here on there. Let's say we're going to encapsulate this area right here. All right, we got this area locked off right now. All right, that way we know that's what that's all we're really looking at right now. Cool. Cool. Then at this halfway mark right in here, you can see like. You know, a cutoff point of everything. Okay, so let me just change this up a little bit, make it clearer, so you can see it a little easier. That's it. So I wouldn't have extra boxes down here and up there. That's it. Remember, we haven't done anything yet. We haven't been taking any trades. No trades has come our way that fit our criteria yet. So if we don't have anything fit the criteria, it's really no moves to be made. Um, this area that is, is, if there's strong buyers here, maybe down here are the strongest buyers in this area. Down here, stronger buyers. All the way down here, even stronger buyers. So, are any of the buyers that are here strong? I don't know. I don't think so. Because at no point did the buying just continue, right? Just continue, continue buying for any considerable amount of time. Or the buying was quickly cut off at this point. As for the selling also, but I'm just in particular talking about buying because the buying started right here and continued up for some time. And once we got up here, it, you know, the buying slowed down as we we keep seeking new levels. All right, we'll sit and just watch for a while. 